There's a holdup in the Bronx, Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child, cruise ships do it idle wild. Car 54, where are you? Say this gypsy woman didn't charge you for telling your fortune. No, but she... Of course not. They're too smart. That's a violation. Yeah, but when I got out of the store, my wallet was missing. Sixty-six bucks, and who knows how much they've already eaten on my credit cards. How many times we warned the public about these ragtail gypsy families who move into empty stores? Yeah, well, I was going to go to the racetrack this afternoon. I figured maybe I'd try to find out how I was going to do. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Andy! Yes, Captain? I got a gypsy eviction case. What's the next car out? Car 54, Tootie and Muldoon. <laughs> Anybody else? No, that's all. Tootie, Muldoon. I'm putting my best men on it. <laughs> this, this gentleman had his wallet stolen by some gypsies. Take him down there and investigate it. Yes, sir. Got clipped by a gypsy, huh? <laughs> Muldoon, when you get there, leave Tootie in the car. If he went in to arrest a gypsy, he'd come out with a pierced ear and a down payment on an earring. Yes, sir. Here comes the pitch. Yogi swings. Yogi Berra strikes out. You see? Yogi Berra, you hear? Your bat should turn into a snake and it should bite your nose off. And here comes the scar up to the plate. Moose hit the home run in the second inning. Put that ball game back up. Oh, Mom, can't we listen to some news and music once in a while? News and music? I got five dollars riding on that game. Gin! What? Gin! Did you cheat? Of course I did. Good boy. <laughs> Him I can teach. Cheat, news and music. Leave him alone, Anna. The breadwinner. You come up with a good horse once in a while. What are you hanging around the store for? It's such a beautiful day. Why don't you go out and steal some popcorn, sneak into a movie? It's that sucker who was here this morning, he's got a cop with him. I'll dump his wallet. Dump his wallet? Go wax your mustache. That you know how to do. Everything I gotta do myself. Good work, officer. I see you caught him. Caught him? <laughs> Yes, he keeps opening our front door and throwing things in. Rocks, old newspapers, banana pits. Today he threw in his wallet. Here. I never threw my wallet in. Get out of my store. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Any money left? One dollar. He left a dollar. That's how he threw it in. Where's the rest of the money? Money? I, I'm just a poor, simple woman of peasant stock who doesn't understand this sort of thing, but... If I did understand this sort of thing, the first thing I would ask is, is the money marked, and do you have a corroborating witness? According to Penal Code 8642, Section 7, upheld by the Supreme Court. Then perhaps you also know you're violating Section 583 of the Building Code. You're using this store for living quarters when legally it can only be used for business purposes. What are you talking about? This is my business quarters. You can read. I'm the authorized franchise dealer and sole distributor in New York for the Budapest Manufacturing Company. What do you sell here? Diesel locomotives. <laughs> Diesel locomotives. Also steam on special order, but you gotta give us 30 days. We're only human. Look, Mrs. Uh... Lupesco. Anna Lupesco. Cable address, Lupo. Look, Mrs. Lupesco, now the police department isn't going to stand for you preying on these gullible citizens. We're getting you out of here. Now, this is the final warning. May all your teeth fall out the day before Thanksgiving. <laughs> Stephen, you left the dollar. I want those gypsies out of my precinct in 24 hours. They cause nothing but trouble. But Captain, that 
Gypsy woman, that Mrs. Lupesco, she knows all the answers. Then don't ask her any more questions. Send someone in dressed in civilian clothes with a wallet full of mark bills. And when you nab her with the money, give her 24 hours to get out. How about Tootie? She didn't see him. Tootie in civilian clothes? Really, Captain, in civilian clothes, he doesn't look like a cop. In a uniform, he doesn't look like a cop. <laughs> all right, let him do it. This may be the beginning of a great civilian. Yes, sir. Stranger. Howdy, ma'am. You're a stranger to our city. Do you tell fortunes here? Only on a social basis. Sit oh, down. that's mighty neighborly of you, ma'am. You sit right down behind the sewing machine. Sewing machine? You're presently drilling from the oil wells. Yeah, three. I see the first one. Ah. Oh. Alas, it's run dry. Oh, nuts. Wait. I see the second one. It's beginning to spurt. Oh, oh, I'm rich. I'm rich. No, 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 it's water. Oh. What about the third one? Third one, the third one. Oh. What's the matter? The vibration stopped. What about the third well? Before I can see the third well, you have to prove the trust by letting me hold just for a minute something Precious, like a diamond ring or a wristwatch or a wallet. Your wallet will do. Now, you close your eyes and say, I trust you. I trust you. I do. I trust you. You've shown the trust. What about my third well? Quick. Yes. I see the third well. Your men are drilling and drilling. Come on, boys. Come on, boys. <laughs> All right, Mrs. Lopesco, there's no doubt about it now. Good. You made up your mind. You want the steam or the diesel? Stab in my order book. My money! Help, please! Quiet. Got the duty to examine these bills. You depose that this is your money and was so marked in front of witnesses? I hereby do so depose. I've been framed. You're lucky. Our captain says unless you're out of the precinct within 24 hours, he'll press charges. You'll never get away with this. I got friends in Washington. Come on, Gunther. I'm not without influence. I was the organizer of the gypsies for Kennedy. You have 24 hours. <laughs> Excuse me, ma'am. How about my third well? Did it come in? Double crossing, stool pigeon. On you, I lay an ancient Carpathian curse. May your back break out in hives that spell dirty, rotten copper. Wait just a minute. That's just the beginning. May you never spend another night under the same roof with your wife. Uh, you have 24 hours. May all your teeth fall out the day before. Oh, I said that. <laughs> we gotta move. Stefan, we gotta steal a horse someplace. <laughs> we sure took care of that gypsy. Well, by tomorrow morning, she'll find another store and be back in business. Just as long as it's not in our precinct. <laughs> Gunther? Gunther? What's the matter? You don't believe nothing about those gypsy curses, do you? Now, don't start believing those crazy curses. Boy, were they funny. What, what did she say again? that my wife would leave me, and that hives would break out of my back spelling dirty, rotten copper. <laughs> That's nutty, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> what are you doing? Oh, brother, can't a man have any privacy around here? Did you ever see a man looking in the mirror at his back before? What's the matter with your back? There's nothing the matter with my back. Well, if there's nothing the matter with your back, why do you keep looking at it for? Can a man look at his own back if he wants to? It's my own back. Might not be much of a back, but I like to look at it. Do you mind? Do you mind? <laughs> Francis, it started. Don't laugh. The curse has started. Don't be ridiculous. Ridiculous? Hives. Look, I got hives. They're starting to form words. There's the O, like copper. Look, God, don't start believing that stuff. I believe what I see. I got hives. That gypsy woman put him there with a curse. Let's go find that gypsy and tell her to get the curse off me. Gunther, it wasn't that curse. Will you listen to me? Hives are a condition of the nerves. Now, you've concentrated so hard on that curse that the power of suggestion has created hives. It's a psychosomatic manifestation. Now, you're an intelligent man. 
You understand that, don't you? Well, of course I do. Just stop thinking about it and they'll disappear. Come on, get into your clothes, I'll drop you off home. I'm not going home. You're not going home? What's well, she's going home to an empty house. <laughs> empty house? Yeah, that's the second part of the curse, that my wife would leave me. She's probably at a lawyer's right now. Get into this, you're going home. Lucille, Lucille, she's gone. I knew it, I knew it, she left me. She's gone, she's gone. Hey, stupid. She's back. Oh, you're back. You're back. Oh, I'm so glad you're back. I'm back? Where was I? I don't care. As long as you're back. Things are going to be different from now on. Good. What are you doing? I'm doing what I've done every day since the day I married you. I'm taking out the garbage. Uh -oh. I'm taking out the garbage. You? You don't even know where the basement is. I'll find it. No matter where it is, I'll find it. Now, now, you're just not handy around the house. Please, I'll take out my own garbage. Wait a minute, Lucille. I noticed you said you're taking out your garbage. I always thought of it as our garbage. I guess I think of it as my garbage because it's here with me all day. Well, actually, Lucille, if you want to get technical about it, it's more my garbage than it is yours. I leave more on my plate than you do. You know why? I'll tell you why. Because you're a pig. You leave more on your plate because you take more. If you'd learn to cook a little better, maybe there wouldn't be so much garbage. Oh, so that's what's been bugging you. I can't cook, huh? You can cook, but not for humans. Not for humans? <laughs> well, that's true. Because I haven't had to cook for a human being for 15 years. Oh, I'm not human. So how come you married me? It's psychological. When I was a little girl, they wouldn't let me have a dog. All right. There's a few things that I would have. Let me tell you this. I'll get it, Mother. Hello? Oh, it's you, Gunther. Lucia left me. Now, stop the stupidity about that gypsy curse. Are you kidding? Thanks to that gypsy woman, I found out what kind of deceitful woman I've been married to all these years. You know the last thing she did before she left? She hid the garbage. <laughs> Gunther, you're crazy. Lucille is the most wonderful woman in the world. I know. I'm lost without her. Suddenly, the house seems strange. Francis. What? I'm a little scared. Gunther, I'll be right over. Oh, Lucille, come back. Lucille, come back. Here are your slippers. Is this the shawl Lucille always brought you? I think so. <laughs> Thank you, dear. Uh, uh, Francis. <laughs> Lucille always worry about me catching cold. You know, Francis, I try to call her out of sisters, but it's no use. She won't come back till the curse is off me. Let's go see the gypsies. Here's your milk. <laughs> now stop this nonsense about a curse. You go see Lucille tomorrow. What is it? Now it's too cold. I heated it. I cooled it. I heated it. I cooled it. It's still not the same temperature that Lucille used to make. Drink it. <laughs> now what? Where are the cookies? What cookies? Lucy used to bring me cookies with my milk. Where does she keep them? I don't know. Maybe she hid them with the garbage. <laughs> Good laugh. You didn't have a loved one leave you helpless. It's just that for 15 years, Lucille waited on me hand and foot. I'm not Lucille. I know. Things are so different. Huh? I used to sit here with my cookies and milk. Lucille used to sit next to me sewing. We'd watch television. All those happy days gone. Just because I double crossed the gypsy. You listen to me, Governor, too. I'm not gonna see a friend of mine go to pieces because of some superstition. There was an article in a magazine this month. I clipped it out. Uh, my slippers. It's by Professor Griswold, right here at New York University. Uh, my pipe. He goes on to say in this article that there is no such thing as a gypsy curse. It's your own mind that's causing Matches. all this. Matches. It's your own mind that's causing all this trouble. Now, you go see Lucille tomorrow. You explain to her that you were excited. She knows you're a very excitable man. Television. <laughs>
Now, as that Professor Griswold goes on to say in the article, those gypsy curses and counter curses were just ways of imposing someone's will on gullible people. And as long as you're going to be the way you are, Dr. Tilly, there's always going to be someone who can argue you into things. Heaven knows I've tried my best. Yes, dear. <laughs> I've said it once. I've said it a hundred times. You're just too emotional. Yes, sweetheart. <laughs> Gunther, dear, you must realize. Get to bed. The first thing in the morning, I'm going to find that gypsy woman and get her to take this awful curse off you. Off me, too. Come on. Go find him yourself. That's the kitchen. Hey, what's going on? Nothing. Nothing. I just got a lead on a stolen car. <laughs> Professor Elliot Griswold went on to say, in their ignorance, these superstitious people rely on counter curses to take off a curse. Counter... Counter curses. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Professor Elliot Griswold, New York University. That's right here in the Bronx. This is encouraging that a member of the police force should plan to give a talk on the superstitions of the ignorant to the members of the force. Yes, it's disgraceful how superstitious some policemen are. Now, what was that you said about uh, counter curses? Oh, yes. Well, when two primitive lovers were separated by a curse, they used a counter curse to bring them together. To bring them together? Usually a necklace of chicken bones. <laughs> Sounds ridiculous now, doesn't it? <laughs> chicken bones. <laughs> <laughs> what else? Uh, mushrooms were sometimes used to break the curse. Wait, 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 hold it. Uh, mushrooms. <laughs> Go on. As well as eggs. A broken egg symbolized family love. A broken egg? Yes. Yeah. We're investigating a stolen car. All you keep doing is looking at empty stores. You never know where they hide them. Keep going. <laughs> Hello, Rose. Is Lucille here? Of course she is. Oh, I just knew you'd be here today. You did? A gypsy told me. <laughs> you wait here. I'm going to call her. Lucille, there's someone here to see you. D did you call, Rose? Oh, I'll leave you two alone. My, you're looking fine. Thank you. You do, too. Lucille! Gunther! <laughs> I was lost without you. It was my fault. You can take out the garbage any time you want. No, it was my fault, Gunther. It was stupid of me making a big fuss over... Ouch! What, what, what have you got under your shirt? Nothing. Nothing at all. Don't tell me nothing. There's something under your shirt. Why should I have something under my shirt? Well, I don't know, but there's something under your shirt. Let well, me look, see. Lucy... <laughs> what is this? What's a bunch of chicken bones shrunk together. <laughs> Chicken bones? How did they get there? Well, you know how it is when you get dressed in a hurry in the morning. You put on socks that don't match, the wrong necktie, uh, chicken bones. Gunther, are you all right? Let me feel your forehead. What's this in your hair? Oh, is there something in my hair? Yes, it, it, it's a raw egg. A raw egg? Gunther, what is this? Chicken bones and a raw egg in your hair? Oh, brother. We haven't seen each other in two days. Is that all you can talk about is chicken bones and a raw egg? What's going on here? Let me get your handkerchief and wipe it. Uh. <laughs> Mushrooms? Well, Mushrooms in your pocket? Well, when a man hasn't got a wife to send things out to be clean, you know, things start to sprout. <laughs> What's in that other pocket? Boy, you nosy. What have you got in that pocket? Grapefruit rinds. <laughs> Grapefruit rinds? I couldn't get mangoes. Now I get it. You didn't come here to make up. This is your way of humiliating me. You're wearing the garbage! What do you mean I'm 
wearing the garbage. You found it, huh? Look, Lucille, this isn't the old garbage. This is all new stuff. I don't care whether it's old or old. I know when I've been insulted. If you think that's an insult, well, get a load of this insult. Look, you. When do you think Tootie will get over with those hives? Who knows? All day in that stolen car of yours. I wish he'd get back so I could get to my own work. I've got an investigation of my own. What investigation? Well, the captain told me to investigate a gypsy family who moved into an empty store this morning. Hey, I'll do it. Uh, in fact, I'll do it for you right away. Thanks. Welcome to my humble abode. Mrs. Lupesco. Oh, it's you. Good news. I just heard from the home office in Budapest. We're making steam shovels now, too. Uh, Mrs. Lupesco, we're not here on police business. We need your help. How can an ignorant gypsy woman help you? Mrs. Lupesco, look at this man. You remember him? Could I help it if his third oil well didn't come in? It didn't. That's all I needed. Quiet. Please, this is serious. You've got to do something about those curses you put on him. Curses? Yeah, about him breaking out in the hives and his wife leaving him. Oh, those. I say them all the time. Some people say goodbye, I give curses. Yeah, well, whatever it is, Mrs. Lupesco, they worked. You're kidding. No, he broke out in hives and his wife left him. What you told him came true. Don't say that! I'm a gypsy, I tell lies! This time it was the truth. He's ruined. He's ruined! I'm ruined! <laughs> What is it? Find the kids. Pack up. We're through. Through? I told an outsider something. It came true. You told the truth? Don't look at me like that. We don't deserve the proud name of gypsies. How long has it been since you stole something really worthwhile? Well, I've had this bad call all summer. I knew it'd come out someday. There's a blot on the family name. I never wanted to have to tell you this, but my father, may he rest in peace. What did he do? He took a job. <laughs> he worked! Only part-time. He quit after two weeks, but he never got over it. He left a blot on the family name that can never be erased. He died with a social security number. <laughs> I wish you had never told me this. We must face facts. We are not true gypsies. This is America. We're Americans. We should start living like Americans. First thing tomorrow, we put the kids in school, we find a decent place to live, and we go on relief. <laughs> Mrs. Lupesco, you've got to take that curse off of Gunther. What curse? Can I help it if the big ox believe me? Please, Mrs. Lupesco. Oh, no, it's cursed tomorrow. I'm no longer in the business. I'll get rid of him. It's his wife. Lucille? Mrs. Lupesco, go out there. You've got to get her back together with Gunther. All right. I'll tell her he's one in a million. He's understanding, he's intelligent, he's handsome. I'll leave the business like a true gypsy, lying like a dog. <laughs> Welcome, confused strange. My sister recommended you. Yes, please, sit down. I'll try to bring you peace of mind. Oh. I see family trouble. Yes, my husband and I had the most terrible fight. It was over a stupid thing like the garbage. I said, I'll take it out. He said, no, he'll take it out. And then we began calling each other names. It became an absolute fight, and I could not stay in the house. So I left, and I went to my sister. No, I've been there for two or three days now, and I'd like to go back. But I don't Are you all tucked in, dear? All tucked in, sweetheart. And your pillow's just right? Just right, darling. It's so romantic. You know, it's just like when we were first married. Didn't you feel it, Gunther, that something stronger than us drew us together again? Yes, you gorgeous thing. It's like a second honeymoon. You know, separating now and then is very exciting because it's so wonderful getting back together again. And Gunther.
There's a holdup in the Bronx. Brooklyn's broken out in fights. There's a traffic jam in Harlem that's backed up to Jackson Heights. There's a scout troop short a child. Cruise ships do and I go wild. Car 